And we got one of our professional white supremacists in here, Dr. Davinsky, one of our professional white supremacists. And I got a, I got a personal question for you, Dr. Davinsky, by the way. What's up, doctor? How are you? Salam alaikum, Brother Tariq. How are you doing today? Um, good. Real quick question before you go into yours. Now, are you technically a doctor? Because a lot of you guys, you know, white supremacists are pretty smart. You guys know how to kind of hustle your way into things. Or is that just a title for online? Well, I have, I have a double degree, but no, I'm not a doctor. Okay. What kind of degree you have, by the way? Law and accounting. Oh, okay. Did you ever go up, you ever passed the bar? No, I just worked in insurance. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. So what's on your mind tonight, Dr. Davinsky? So my question for you is, why do you always run cover for the Jews? I thought oh, Dutch brought up Lord. a good point earlier. Oh, and God. you talked about how they changed their name to to um, sound more Anglo, right? Right. But what uh-huh. what about what about this example here? We've got, okay, Leon Trotsky, born Lev Davidvich Bronstein. So they're not just changing their name to sound more Anglo. They weasel their way into every country and every political structure. And uh, you always just talk about, how come you can delineate from the African but we can't delineate from the Jews. Because you all share the system of white supremacy and you benefit from it. What benefits do the Jewish people who are classified as white, what don't they get that the regular white supremacists get? What don't they get? Uh, I can't say that again. What are white Jewish people excluded from in the system of white supremacy. What don't they get? Y'all get the same benefits and privileges and protection. That's why we don't delineate. You guys, we don't look at you as a different group. You all uh, who believe in anti-black racism, you all are on the same page with each other. So why would yeah, we... But look- a lot of the Africans, they, uh, they, they benefit from affirmative action when they come to America. They want to claim to be this oppressed minority and we all know the real privilege in the west is being a minority and i can prove this it's because when you have hold on let me let me go back and you were like um why do we delineate from africans we're doing that because of a reparations claim we're owed something based on our lineage so that's why we delineate we're saying hey we got a reparations claim and we have to make it very specific to who's the money, the money's going to go to. So that's why we're delineating. Now, we, you know, I still look at some of the African and Caribbeans who are cool with us as our brother. We're still cool. If you're a rider, we're going to look out for you. If you're a rider and if you're on code with me, if you're a foreign black person, I'll ride for you. I'll look out for you. I've been over to Africa. I've helped several people over in Africa. So the white supremacist Jewish person and the white supremacist Anglo even though they might have some ethnic differences, they all get on code when it comes to black people. And that's the only thing that matters. It's impractical for me or any other black person to break up suspected white supremacists and all of these little groups because they have some ethnic beefs that they have behind closed doors. You understand? And all it is is a deflection, Dr. Davinsky. It's, it's a deflection to keep our eyes off of white supremacy, which is the only problem that we have. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, but if you look at the core population of America, the foundational white Americans, those aren't no Jews. Such thing. No such thing. Who's, who's the core population of America in terms of ethnogenesis? Who built the country? Um, well, foundational Black Americans built the country. Um, Do you the, actually? Black, hey, you black, actually believe? Look, I'm not saying that Black Americans didn't help. The foundationals didn't help. But if you're going to give the credit to any one group, it's going to be our foundational White Americans. No, because they failed. That's the problem. You can't give them credit because when they tried to do it on their own, they repeatedly failed, sir. This is very well documented, right? So, so if you took away all of the. Um, all of the input from the foundational white Americans and you just had the plantations, America would be like, what? It would ha- you'd have some some plantations. You'd have maybe half a railway. Uh, there's nothing there. How so? When it was black people like Horace King building um, the railway, the railways and the bridges and many of the homes 
many of the people who were the architects were the foundation of black Americans who were enslaved. You had the Benjamin Bannockers designing, he was the real one designing Washington, D.C. They try to give the credit to a Frenchman and say that Benjamin Banneker memorized the blueprints. I don't believe that worth a damn. It was us doing that. It was us coming up with um, books about electricity and electric lighting. It was foundational black Americans doing that because we were doing all of the hard work out here. So we were coming up with the more ingenuity type of plans to make work easier and to make the workflow better. We were coming up with that. That's why after slavery, we got over 50,000 patents immediately. We couldn't even get patents while we were enslaved. So we are literally the foundation, sir. The white supremacists came and just colonized and took all of our ingenuity and took credit for everything. And then they started to expound on it. But when the white supremacists tried to do it on their own, Dr. Davinsky, history has shown they all failed miserably. So the, you think that in, in, in Tariq's view of the, like early America, the whites were just sitting around like drinking tea and blacks were doing all the work? That's basically what they were doing, sir. They were only 5% of white Americans owned slaves at the height of slavery. Sir, it was the government that had us locked in slavery. This is why they would send the armies down into Florida to try to get runaways and try to get some of those black Seminoles. It was the U.S. government that had us locked down. That's why they had the Fugitive Slave Act, which was a federal law. The U.S. government, <clears throat> the entire government was completely complicit in it, sir. So I don't want to hear about the, the certain percentages because all of the economy was built off of our backs. Every institution was born out of anti-black racism. The banking the insurance companies, the railroad systems, even the medical system as we know it started off. Well, the Irish Americans built uh, half of the railways, at least. Irish Americans didn't do a damn thing but scratch lice off their asses and eat potatoes. <laughs> They didn't do a damn thing. They were indentured servants. Um, they barely survived that, and they got paid afterwards. They got freedom dues. They were. Have you ever seen those early videos of, say, like 1920s New York or 1920s Chicago or Birmingham or Sydney? You look mm -hmm. at these kids, the, the little white children. They look like 40-year-old men because they're working in coal factories. They're working sweeping chimneys. Uh, so the whole idea that like white Americans weren't hardworking or white people weren't hard working as just blacks that were doing this is disingenuous i think that you need to put some respect on foundational white americans there's name. no foundational white american in the early days of america we were doing all the work the white supremacists failed when they tried to do it on their own they tried to get these colonies they ended up cannibalizing each other they ended up disappearing they tried to build up roanoke out there in north carolina they all disappeared um san miguel del guadape well, the, the black people ran them out, out of there. When they tried to build St. Augustine in Florida, they kept repeatedly failing down there and begging for black folks, begging the Spanish crown. So if there's people. no foundational Come call on, no, hold on, no, 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 let's run it all down. I'm just telling you your, your, your resume of your people. Jamestown, before the that, that slave ship came in around 1619, um, before that, a couple of years before that, they almost ate each other in Jamestown. They were starving and eating each other, sir. It was, they were down bad. So they didn't get it together to the black people got involved and really helped them out. But go ahead. And, and also, let me get my brother, Dr. Randy Short, in here to chime in. Dr. Short, are you here, sir? Oh, yes, my brother. Oh, yes, my brother. Yes, and sir. what Dr. Dubinsky is saying, sir. Can you please chime in? Well, yeah, what I want to say is his understanding of American history is off because even the Irish that were brought over, because he doesn't know who he is, and they definitely doesn't know who we are, that there were people who were not white who were in Ireland and Scotland who mm -hmm. were brought here. So there are no foundational white Americans. There are only foundational people of Moorish descent brought here who were the majority and you had the rich english patricians and many of them of which i'm descended of sir you're speaking to a descendant of margaret buford so <laughs> this idea that even the foundational elites of england a lot of these people are moorish mixes 
Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just a fact. And one drop of black blood is a stupid rule you guys made, made you 100% black. Therefore, there are no foundational white folks doing much. And yes, they were drinking tea and getting paid and, and drinking rum and pink folk. They didn't do the work that built the country. Black folks built New York. They built Charleston. They built Jamestown. They built Richmond. They built Boston. They did most of the railroads. However, to bolster the sagging egos of people who got 3.6 million square miles of land off of genocide, slavery, and brutality to tell you how you earned all this through some manifest destiny, which you killed so many people until the greenhouse effect on the planet changed. So what you did was you killed, you stole, you destroyed, you enslaved. That's who you are. And that's why we're owed. And I don't even want No, because I actually have a damn doctorate and you don't. And so I don't. I have one. You, you, you don't. And therefore, let's not even try that. So that's racist. So you can sit up and try to tell me something and you don't even have the training in the subject area I have. And so wherever you went to school, I went better. What's your doctorate? Uh, absolutely. It's it's in history. Doctor? It's in history. And you said you what? Accounting? And law. And we know what we're accounting and law. What kind of law, sir? General law is a bachelor's. Uh, general, which means you don't know history. And in fact, law. Hold it. Uh, 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 because no, we, we can't do education, sir. A law degree in reality is an undergraduate degree that was professionalized for lawyers to make more money. So in reality, you have a exaggerated undergraduate degree, and I have a PhD and three masters. We're not equal. Okay, so I think you're alluding towards Cheddar Man, and if you look at genetic no, studies, I'm alluding to the fact that you don't that you we're not we're not equal. And brother Tariq, brother Tariq is right. Well, no, I don't care. I can take fifty. We just listened to this woman who called herself a daughter of El Ducci, which means that she supports fascist Mussolini, who did mm -hmm. genocide on people in Italy. I'm sorry, in, in in Libya and in Eritrea and in Ethiopia, and she's going to lecture this our brother Tariq our hero about how she has a problem with him being divisive what's more divisive than mussolini who started world war ii doing mm. genocide on black people in africa how dare somebody say anything to Tariq? so you know we're tired and we see this whole thing and i see the setup if you go to that lady's thing she's got this guy forgive me for forget his jones michael jones eric michael jones who is a, a person known for attacking Jews. They're trying to put Tariq Nasheed as an anti-Semite so they can silence him. That's what oh, this so bullshit's all about. No, 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 no. I didn't say a damn thing about Jews. So you can, you I can talked talk about, about you. You came about right, you came right hey, oh, behind. This is, this is you funny, came, no, 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 no. We, you, you can't just tell just me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about how we've been treated you can't oh, yeah, hilarious. you that's can't hilarious. You no 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 not only not only is hilarious not only is hilarious the, the people that you think are jews aren't so as a person of people descent i'm offended you mean the little european people the kazarians your okay, type so, your, your hey, type on, your converts okay Tariq. so um, is, is, is it correct what he said is it correct that you are worried about getting canceled by the Jews. That's why you can talk about white people all that, day that, and not no, have that fear. Well, no, that 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 doesn't work. That little weak peer pressure thing where, oh, are you scared? Are you scared? That doesn't work because I'm never taking my eyes off the, the real problem, which is white supremacy. The problem is white supremacy. The whole, well, it's really the Jews. That's a deflection that you guys try to use, and it just doesn't work. But he said that you would get canceled if you spoke about the Jews. You'd be on that uh, Nick Cannon kind of world tour of yeah, apology. Because what, oh, what, I'm sorry, yeah, because Jews. I'm sorry. A, yeah, because what you, the, the white supremacists, you and your white supremacist brethren, that's a trick bag that we're not falling for. Because if we start saying something about Jewish people, you guys will be the first ones siding with them against us. When they were going after Nick Cannon, y'all white supremacists weren't supporting Nick Cannon. When the when the 
ADL and all these people go after Minister Farrakhan, you side with the ADL. You don't protect. Why is it? Why is there no ADL for white people? You understand that? Uh, why you, is there no ADL for white people to read? The hell you don't. You already got an ADL. It's called white supremacy. That that's <laughs> ADL within itself. That's white supremacy. Uh, you already uh, have a I... court system. You you have all of the systems that's already in your favor, sir. You but why can you come you on here and defame white people twenty four seven, and you, you don't, don't have any social repercussions? You don't have any you do cancellations. What? You're on YouTube. You're on Twitter. How come you can say all of this stuff about white people, but you'll shy away from the Jews because Doctor said it himself that you would be well, cancelled. So that shows who has the power. What you said isn't true. I don't say anything negative about white people at all. I only talk about white supremacists, sir. Okay, so let me address stuff even. Did you, 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 you feel me? Did you do you feel me though? I don't say anything. Look, Tariq, I know that you have to run cover. You're in LA. You make movies. No, you're in that. No, you're in that no, media no, you're business. Project, projecting. You're projecting. I don't say anything about white people. I talk about white supremacy. I have don't. You, go, I don't go after you, people because of what they're born as. If you're born as a Jewish person, there's nothing wrong with that. If you so are, do you love white people, Tariq? No, do you oh, love no. white? on even because you're trying to I'm, I'm telling you what the deal is and you're trying to explain your way through it i don't go after people because they're jewish i don't go after people because they're white i don't go after people because they're foreign i don't do that that's called bigotry to sit here and say the jews are the that's bigotry i don't believe that i don't talk like that that's bigotry now, the white supremacists, I got a problem with because that's an action. They're doing something that makes them white supremacists. That's action-based. A person who's a foreigner undermining us, that's a tether. I got a problem with a tether. You understand? But I don't yeah, so go... I don't go after people based but on... Judaism on is... Look, look, Judaism's not... It's an ethno-religion, right? But there is a supremacist uh, aspect to no, Judaism because they, they posit themselves you as God's it. chosen people. And in a lot of their you prophecies, the Jews have will have slaves two, called the Goyim. And you can't have two supremes. It's an oxymoron. It's illogical. You cannot have two ethnic groups who are supreme. You can't have white supremacy and some other type of supremacy. By definition, sir, by logic, doesn't make no, sense. No, of course, if different groups have different kind of power systems in different countries, then you're going to have supremacist groups of those regions. In in no. China, for instance, the supreme the, group is being Han Chinese, and they've done a Hanification the white of Xinjiang province. But the white they've done a But the white supremacists, they can decimate China anytime they feel like it. All right. When we talk about ethnic groups, there's only one supreme. That's the white supremacists. So you're saying that, like, just innately we're supreme because other groups have national no, not movements that have racial supremacists. Not, in, uh, not innately, but systematically. They've created a militarized system to back up their supreme views. And they can, wi they can wipe people off. Anytime so in China, know. in China, there's a Hanification. It, it's been a Don't long matter. process throughout China to absorb all Don't of these other. Matter. They got European warships on the coast of China, waiting on China to act bad, waiting on China to get froggy. So yeah, they got China in check. All right. There used to be a saying: "You don't have a Chinaman's chance in hell." The China, yeah, China. and Ireland used to be the poorest country in Europe, and now it's in the top ten continuously for Human Development Index. Right. So, so what's your point? The the point uh, is white supremacy is the point. That's the point, sir. I'm just telling you what white supremacy is about. Okay? What about Arab supremacy? Well, you know, there's, there's more Arab, there's more slaves alive today than any point in human no history. Arab, Most of those are in the Arab no, world. There's no Arab supremacy. Okay, I'll give you an example of Arab. Oh, oh no, there's no Arab supremacy. The white supremacists, they go over there and smack the Arab community around anytime they feel like it, sir. They always got a Look, war. Look, Tariq, on in every population... Sir, they got the Arabs by the nuts with the oil. They just use them to get that oil over there. They got them guarding their oil. That's what they use. Tariq, the you're feigning ignorance because you know that different I'm countries not. have different ethnic struggles. And sir, in the Sahal... And the white supremacists can go over there and topple any Arab leader... Anytime they feel like it, when they want to go get a Qaddafi and knock him off, they can do it anytime they feel like it. Right.
but that doesn't help the people that are oppressed in, so that, in Palestine, for instance, would, one of the most oppressed sir, countries on earth. This is this we're talking about white supremacy. White supremacy means my group can kill your group with impunity and you can't do it to me. That's what Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said. That's what Supreme Sorry, you won't let you won't let me speak for more than ten seconds no, without muting no, 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 me because listen, you know I'm about to cook your entire world. No, you're meat. not cooking anything, sir. I'm just telling I'm you. I'm gonna cook you I'm white gonna cook you like some bush meat. Okay, white supremacy is my group can kill your group with impunity and you can't do the same. Now go ahead and cook me. Okay. So every country has uh, a dominant uh, majority and then they have uh, repressed minorities within that group. And I brought up slavery because we always want to talk about reparations and we want to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. You but if you, look at the Sahel, if you look at the Sahel region of Africa, uh, Mauritania, Chad, and Niger, there's a group of people there, and this predates the transatlantic slave trade. And so it's a racial stratification of the Berber caste system. At the top, you have so-called white Berbers, Arabs. And at the bottom, you have uh, blacks, uh, they're called Auckland, and that translates to be black. And this trans this predates transatlantic slave trade. About 10% of Mauritania's population are currently enslaved, so black people ruled by Arab Berbers. If these people run away from their slave masters, they're returned. Uh, in Palestine, one of the most oppressed countries on earth right now, there's still a racial stratification there where the Arabs are on top. You can look up the Afro-Palestinians. They refer to these people as slaves. They refer to their quarters in Palestine as slave quarters. So you always talk about about white supremacy. Look at the ethnic tolerance index. Australia, Canada, America, all of the Anglosphere countries are in the top 10, top 20 nations for the least racist. But you okay. want to you want no. you want to look at white okay. people slow down because you're talking about some Mauritania. It don't matter. Mauritania was colonized by France. Okay, so you you you're talking about countries that got colonized by the white supremacists. So you're proving my point, sir. You it doesn't it. help the look. Even if they were colonized by France, it doesn't right. help the millions of black people enslaved by them today. How does that? How does that matter? So, well, so what? Well, hang on, hang on. Listen, listen, Tariq. If you're in Mauritania <laughs> right now and you're a black slave, they're like, oh well, these poor Arabs were colonized by and France. The no, they're French like, we're a slave to the these Arabs. We're and a slave the to the French are still running the show. They're still running the economies over there too. The French are still running the economies, sir. So you're, you're proving my point. So, uh, so, it, goes, so look, it goes back my, to My point is, Tariq, is that you want to blame everything on white supremacy when because, in actuality, <laughs> okay, like in actuality, if you're an oppressed ethnic group in, in Palestine, the Afro-Palestinians, they aren't talking about white people. They're talking about how the Arabs are oppressing them. The same in the Sahel region, the same all over the world. Look at how the Indians and East Africans are treated in the Gulf regions. They're treated as slaves. They're forced to sleep in shipping containers. They get their passports stolen. Is that white supremacy doing that? Yes, I don't it, think is. So. Oh, it, it is. It is. It is. The white people in Europe. They're getting those Europe. slaves the European white people, so the market is there. It's a simplistic worldview that you have. It's the same thing that white people do with Jews. Or oh, oh, no, sir. We're still talking about white supremacy. The slave market up there in Northern Africa... The buyers are European, sir. So we're still going back to. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Can I? Can I? Can, can uh, I go? Yeah, yeah. Slavery is alive and well. You got Europeans going up into Africa, adopting children and taking them back to Europe and treating them like slaves. So yeah, there's a buyer's market. So and I, I can go to the slave market in Mauritania, which they still have. I can go buy a black slave and then I can bring my slave into Europe or Australia. I can just put them in like luggage or whatever. Is this, is this the world that you live in, Tariq? Sure. They, they take black people to Europe and Australia all the time and treat them like slaves all the time. We're dealing really? with Yes, they do, sir. And you know that. So I could go buy one. Okay, yeah. And now you're playing dumb. No, so no, thank... I'm being serious. Okay, now you're being dumb. Yeah, you can go buy somebody. It's a slave market. That's what a slave is. You get a person and sell them. Uh, you're trying to play dumb. In the rhythm of life, there's a melody that dances with every step we take. And in those steps, there's a tale of legacy, of culture, and of the spirits that guide us, introducing root work, where tradition and heritage intertwine, 
Crafted from the essence of foundational black American root work, root work deodorant is more than just a scent. It's a connection to the spirits of our ancestors. With six enchanting scents to choose from, each infused with the potent High John the Conqueror root, known for its healing and protective properties. Long-lasting and enchanting, root work deodorant will keep you feeling fresh while embracing the spirit of Mojora, the very essence of root work culture. Root work deodorant where tradition and heritage intertwine. Experience the power at rootworkstyle.com. Let your spirit dance in the rhythm of root work.